Power is nothing without control. This claim by tire manufacturer Pirelli is one of my favorite marketing slogans of all time. And today, I want to discuss with you what it means for our society facing the rise of ever more powerful algorithms. It has nearly been 30 years since Pirelli introduced their slogan, and for me, it still hasn't lost its magic. Power is nothing without control, encapsulates everything that you would want in a tire. You want your tire to control the power of your vehicle in order to give you optimal performance. I also like how this slogan shifts the way we often talk about cars because a lot of times we quickly focus on engine and horsepower. But then Pirelli comes along and tells us, without the right tire, all of that doesn't mean much. What makes this slogan truly great though is the way it can be used for so many different areas in life. Power is nothing without control. It's a very important basis for democracy. If people have all the power, but no control over the politicians that they put in charge, we would not think of this system as a free functioning democracy. Power is nothing without control is also the essence of the origin story of a lot of superheroes. Some average person gains a lot of power, but has to learn how to control it in order to really become a superhero. But what I want to focus on today is what this slogan means for us facing the fourth industrial revolution. As you may know, during the fourth industrial revolution, we specialize in automating cognitive and intellectual tasks rather than physical ones. The last couple of years, we've seen the rise of self-driving cars where algorithms decide whether to accelerate or brake and where to steer. Algorithms decide what kind of content we see and what kind of prices we are offered on certain websites. Governments use algorithms for surveillance, but also for e-government services that make it easier for us to get new passports, for example. In business, we see interconnected information systems, the gathering of large amounts of data and the use of machine learning and other algorithms that provide a level of process automation that is completely unprecedented. So what we can see is that over the last couple of years, we've added a lot of power. But as we know, power is nothing without control. How well are we able to control this newly gained power? To answer this question, I want to give you an example of how we control traditional processes today. And for this, we're going to look at the realm of business, because this is the place where we have the most established controlling algorithms and controlling methods today. So let's imagine a company that sells coffee machines. But they don't sell the coffee machines to us consumers, but they sell it, uh, sell it to uh, our favorite bars and restaurants, for example. It's a B2B company. And within this company, there's a sales department. The sales department has a lot of different policies, but the one policy I want to focus on today is the discount policy. Salespeople have the power to grant discounts. But our policy states only discounts up to 5% are allowed. If you want to give a higher discount, you would have to ask the head of sales for approval. One team member in the team of sales has a very loyal customer and they want to provide them with a higher discount, let's say 10%. In order to follow the policy, they would have to fill out a discount approval form providing all the necessary information and go to the head of sales to actually get this discount approval form signed. Only if the salesperson has signed documentation, they can actually go ahead and grant the discount to the customer. This workflow is already part of the control mechanism and is what we normally call a preventive control. It should prevent deviations from the policy. Additionally, at the end of each month, the head of sales is going to look through a sample of all of the invoices, check whether there is a discount, and if there is a discount, check whether it's in line with the policy. This part of the controlling mechanism is called a detective control, because the head of sales works like a detective trying to find faulty discounts. Immediately, we can see that this setup is not really efficient. It probably takes a lot of time for both the salespeople and the head of sales to actually do the preventive control and do the detective control. And in addition to that, we only look at a small sample of all of the invoices in the detective control. Just to give you some point of reference, a lot of times, less than 1% of relevant transactions are actually checked in a detective control. 
But there's also an inherent benefit to this setup. There are people involved. If one of the salespeople didn't come to ask permission for a higher discount for the last couple of months, chances are that the head of sales is going to look through their invoices a bit more thoroughly in the detective control. And in general, people would like to keep their jobs, something algorithms simply don't care about. And talking about algorithms, let's imagine our company decides that this whole process is not efficient enough and they want to automate it. They want to deploy an algorithm that makes the decision of whether to grant a discount or not and how high this discount should be. In this case, this algorithm would quite likely not have to get permission for every discount because this would simply not lead to the desired increase in efficiency. So the only part of the controlling mechanism that would be left is the detective control at the end of each month. So what we can see is that through this automation, our company gained power, but even lose, loses control. What happens if the algorithm was not set up correctly and it grants faulty discounts? Or if the algorithm was changed or even hacked with the same result? Even if we would find a faulty discount at the end of the month during the detective control, by then a potentially enormous number of faulty discounts could have already been granted. Our financial exposure could also be enormous. Circling back to the other use cases we talked about before, faulty algorithms in self-driving cars could have fatal consequences. And I, for one, would like to be sure that if I order a new passport through some e-government service, that it's actually sent to me and not to someone else. All of this goes to show that it's really important to control automated processes, but that our current control mechanisms are simply not up for the challenge. So we need to change them. But what do we actually want? I would argue that we want three things. First of all, we want our controlling mechanisms to be completely independent of human resources. We live in the time where efficiency is key, so this is also the case for controlling mechanisms. Second, I would argue that we want to control every transaction, not just a small sample at the end of the month. And talking about end of the month, I would argue that we want the control to happen in real time. So if something is going wrong, we actually have the chance to react to it. Some of you might already see where I'm going with this. I think we need to automate controlling mechanisms. We need algorithms to watch over other algorithms. And in order to distinguish these two types of algorithms I'm talking about, I'm going to talk about the second one as control bots. How would a control bot change our setup? First of all, with a control bot, we wouldn't have a detective control, but we would have an automated detective control, where the control bot would know the discount policy of the company, and every time a new invoice is being created, the control bot would get this information and check whether the invoice follows company policy, and if not, it would raise an alarm. The control bot would send an email to the head of sales, for example. Only at the very last point, if something really did go wrong, we involve human beings into this process. One thing that I want to add here is that, of course, you could also use automated detective controls uh, provided by control bots for traditional processes. In our case, the control bot would then check for every discount if there, every discount about 5%, if there is a signed discount approval form that is connected to this higher discount. And only if this is not the case, again, would raise an alarm. Now, some of you might say, well, but if the control bot is just another algorithm, who controls this algorithm? Who controls the control bot? And in general, you're right. If the setup of a control bot is not done well, Potentially, we just shift the risk. For this reason, my team and I are developing software tools that enable anyone to create reliable control bots. And what we have learned over the last couple of years is that control bots need to have three key features. First of all, control bots need to be flexible. What do I mean by that? Processes change all the time. Policies are shifting. Even regulations are changed all the time, and so processes need to keep up. If a process is changed, it's essential that our control bot can be easily adapted to this new 
situation. In addition to that, control bots need to be secure. And I'm not talking about IT security alone. Of course, it's very important that control bots cannot be hacked either. But it's also about governance. Yes, it's important that control bots are flexible enough to be adapted easily, but we don't want anybody, just anybody, to uh, be able to change a control bot. We want only authorized personnel using 4i principle, for example, to actually change a control bot. And last but not least, it's really important that control bots are traceable. Every change to a control bot needs to be well documented, and every control execution needs to be well documented. It's quite challenging to combine all of these free features into control bots, but if a control bot has these free features, flexibility, security, and traceability, they can really reliably control processes, especially automated ones. And this, in turn, is important for us to really leverage the power of algorithms, because also this power is nothing without control. Thank you. <laughs>